Well, now we're going to enter the world of uh, magnetite, rare earths and uh, tungsten. Uh, Managing Director John Peters, uh, who's going to speak to us next, is a CEO with over 30 years corporate uh, finance experience at uh, senior levels. I was talking to him beforehand and uh, interesting to see that uh, in contrast to some of our other uh, speakers, his experience goes uh, outside the sort of mineral world to, to other things uh, too and he's bringing all that experience uh, to uh, another AIM company. So uh, John Peters of M, his MD of Strategic Minerals. Thank you Nigel. Uh, I should start off with the good news and the bad news. The good news is we're not looking to raise any capital. <laughs> the bad news is you've got to listen to this Australian accent and I've made a, a very big promise that I will not use any sandpaper in the delivery of this presentation. I hope some of you get that one. Um, <laughs> Strategic minerals is probably a bit different to some of the ones we, you're going to see here as well. We're probably different from a lot of companies in that we're profitable and we're diversified. So we're not one uh, mineral that we're exposed to. When you talk about the gold miners, there's one gold price. If you talk about other, one, other uh, commodities, there's one. In our particular case, we've looked to try to get a suite of them to try and work, out, work our way through cycles in various prices. So <coughs> the usual disclaimer, the main sort of stuff that we're about is we like to think that we tick all the boxes here. Firstly, unlike most companies, we're in a top decile of the miners in that we're a uniquely profitable company. Um, we have significant up upside because of our diversified portfolio and that portfolio ranges not just from cash generation but through exploration, etc., in various levels from brownfields to greenfields. Um, Cash flow we have got, we couple by trying to keep our overheads low. Um, as many people will know, particularly when it was even more tighter, uh, the long flight from Australia was done economy class. Nowhere, nowhere else could I stretch my legs. Um, but we are, we're very mindful of that even still. We have a history of that. We keep it that way. Um, recently, we put on a new project, which will be, be talked about in this as well. And that project anticipates a second revenue stream into the company. When we do that, that starts to change the profile of the company and it's quite a game changer for us because what it does, it gives you two cash flows coming in, gives you certain certain cash flow, even raises the possibility of dividends at our level. Um, and finally, of course, the big, other big tick you've got here is the fact that we have an extremely experienced, committed, proven management team. We've turned this company around from where it was. We're pointed in a very strong direction and we're all committed to growth in these sort of areas. So, all in all, as I said, we tick all the boxes. If that doesn't tick all your boxes, I've got to become a superhero to do it, I think. So, um, that's, uh, that's that. So, basically, we're in four areas at the moment. Um, starting from the top left there, uh, the Southern Minerals Group is probably the core of what we have. It's a magnetite stockpile. I'll be going over each of these a little bit more in a few minutes. Uh, a magnetite stockpile in um, New Mexico, and so in the US. Uh, and that one's more of a logistics exercise than it is an actual mining because it's an existing treated magnetite stockpile and we help uh, distribute that locally, etc. Um, then we have our most recent acquisition on the top right, uh, Lee Creek Copper Mine. This one is uh, particularly interesting because we believe this will be uh, in operation within the, or producing cash flow by the middle of next year. So it's, uh, and quite substantial cash flow as well. So again, it's developing for us that second cash flow that will underpin the whole company. Um, then as my friend uh, and co-director uh, Peter Whale here often refers to it, we're pole darking in um, Redmore and in, in Cornwall, uh, looking for tin, tungsten, uh, copper. Um, have been drilling there, it's a brownfield site, we're getting some good results, we've got great people, great community support, Everyone down there thinks is somehow or another related to a major miner, as they keep telling us. Um, but, you know, it's a very interesting project. Again, one not necessarily going to come off in the shorter term, but uh, again, people will hate this, but I call it the juggernaut. I reckon once it gets going, it's just going to be very hard to stop. Um, finally, we've got the very greenfields areas in a, um, a company we have in West Australia called Care. That's got two major sites. One of them is perspective for nickel, particularly nickel sulphides, and we've also discovered some cobalt deposits there as well. Uh, and the second 
is um, a place called Mount Wild, um, and that, that is perspective. It's right up, it actually abuts the Mount Wild rare earth mine, uh, and is also perspective besides for rare earth, it's right in the middle of a gold area, so that, that keeps uh, Amanda happy. Um, so here we've got quite a diversified group of, um, of uh, projects. How we look to manage this, to a large extent, we try not to go to our, our shareholders or the market itself unless there is a accretive asset being added. Right? So generally we try to fund within ourselves if we can. We're in that position now, we've we're actually got a bit of luxury that we can do this. You know? it's, it's a nice thing to have for a change. Um, so Cobra has been generating us some cash, you can see we feed it into some of the others, but pretty soon Lee Creek is going to help us do the rest as well. And Lee Creek also has some expansion um, availability as well. So, um, and you might say, well look, you know, you've got all these, why you've got all these sort of, um, these sort of uh, products, etc. And, and it's not by accident. The, the management, the board, we've actually sat down and said, look, what are the metals and minerals we want to be in that we think have the best demand and supply aspects? What are the ones where the prices are going to do the best? You know, and we've picked out some of them and as you can see most of them are there. The strange thing to us is we didn't start this way, although it's starting to develop a bit more, but almost all of the extra ones have an orientation towards some of this new battery tech, batteries that are coming out. And Yes, we see the trend occurring with that as well and we know some of that's going to come. It's not that we picked these for that reason, but we picked them because the demand and supply was there. This additional incremental demand is very important and it will drive prices in those sort of areas. So what we've got is we've got operating cash out of um, the magnetite in, um, in, New, in New Mexico. We'll pretty soon have it coming out of copper. Um, we put that into our tin tungsten copper explorations and we also put it looking for the others. Now, of course, this down here generates most of our money, but at the same time, this stuff up here is what can just send your share price through the roof. So, Cobra. As you can see, this looks like a bit of a dam area and in fact what it is, they fenced off the end of a valley, filled it with treated um, magnetite and we have a contract with the mine owner to remove that. Um, it's actually, as I said, it's the core of what we've been doing as far as cash flow is concerned. We've now got about 750,000 tonnes of material left. Told you it was a very low risk. Profit margins have been very high for us. They've been in the order of 50 to 60 per cent throughout 2017. Um, and as I said, it's our cash cow. You might notice we've got a drop here in the last quarter. One of our major clients has asked for a bit of a slowdown because of a backup with her production, and so we're doing that as well. But essentially, we're in a, a bit of a luxury position to have that sort of cash flow backing us up. That takes us to our next close production item, Lee Creek Copper Mine. We picked this up, I think, for an absolute steal. Um, well, what we effectively picked up was uh, 24,900 tonnes of jaw compliant copper resource in the ground at less than 100 bucks a tonne. Now, given that the, um, the, gold, the copper price is approximately $7,000 a tonne, I think we've got some room there that we can soak up some costs. Um, but the main thing is there are existing licences. Very importantly, people don't seem to be concentrating on the fact we have an off-take agreement for almost anything we want to produce. We've got an off-take agreement that will take 300 tonnes a month from us. We know, and we know why it suits them to do this. There's a very strong economic reason for that. Um, we're probably going to start around 200 tonnes sometime in the middle of next year and start to work our way up. But even at 200 tonnes, that's at, at the sort of prices, the price is based off a percentage, 85% uh, of uh, LME copper price. That, we're talking about $1.2 million uh, a month, US dollars, sorry, a month in sales. Start to work that into what that means for profits and you can understand why this has my great concentration. We will be making sure this comes out properly over the next year. Now, these things, it's a reactivation of an existing copper, copper heat leach 
uh, mine. We're probably going to add some agglomeration to it to make sure that it will reduce the risks of problems associated with heap leaching. But we believe, and we've got very strong belief, that we can, we've got a team together, we've uh, looked at some of the problems that actually caused problems at this mine many years ago when it stopped working, and we know that we can carry that through. So we're very confident on producing this. Now, I say we're going to have cash flow about the middle of next year. We will actually might have some cash flow before, but we're going to have regular cash flow by that stage. So as we start repairing and going through some of the old heaps, we may generate a little bit of money that helps with the rest of this, but in the end, it's sort of next year. And of course, that will be a complete, as I said, it will be a complete game changer for us. Paul Darkey, down in Redmore, uh, down, in, uh, Redmore down in Cornwall. Um, it's got tin tungsten on there. There is also a reasonable amount of copper associated with this. So when I talk about this one, you'll hear us talk about a tin equivalent, and that looks at the values of all of these in, in what's being mined. Um, we own 50% of this project with a, an Australian listed uh, company called New Age Exploration who strangely has all its assets in the UK. Um, uh, it's, it's got quite a large area, it's an established area. Our drilling has virtually doubled what we had initially as our resources, um, showing about a 1% uh, tin equivalent grade. Um, We've been doing some analysis of it. We know we've got to drill a bit more to get it up to a level where we've got a sufficiently investment grade deposit and uh, a story for the market. But we're moving along towards our pre-feasibility on that. We've, we've got very strong community support, as you can see some of the people here. Um, and you know we're sort of targeting to get ourselves towards something where if we get into production and we do things, it'll be a 2021, maybe 22 sort of scenario. So this is where I say we're in that brownfield area. It's known commodity. There's lots of it, lots of material in this area. It's been mined for years. What we are finding is we're probably going deeper, and they couldn't do that economically before. And as we go deeper, we're starting to find the grade is starting to pick up. So we're particularly interested in where we go, and in over the next next few weeks to months, we're probably going to come out with a bit more information to the market about what our plans are for the second half of this year. Care, this is our greenfields exploration areas. Um, so as you'd, as you'd expect, this is uh, our more high risk, if you like. Um, but we have a portfolio of tenements here that, um, that uh, covers quite a large area in Western Australia. Probably two of them are the most important ones to us. That's Hands Camp. Hands Camp, we've done some drilling. We've shown that there's traces for the nickel sulphide. We haven't found the nickel sulphide yet, because once you do that, the, the share price would probably go through 10p. Um, but we're finding the traces, we're doing more, more drilling, etc. While we've been doing that, we've also found cobalt deposits as part of it, which of course the market always likes an interest in. So as part of our ongoing drilling, etc. there, we are expanding that to, to assess that as well. Um, one of the other major areas of the tenements that we have is um, is the uh, um, uh, sorry? Is it Mount Weld, and which abuts the Linus Mount Weld rare earth one? As I mentioned before, we're doing some drilling there at the moment. We're doing drilling right up on the border, um, just to make sure whether we've got rare earths there. Um, it's a little questionable how strong it is, but we'll find out. Um, and the other side of it is this is a well-known gold area. This whole whole area. So we're also doing some some drilling around gold. What we've really got is we've got a, as an area which is a fairly mineral rich area. So what we're really doing is trying to move along, not throwing huge amounts of money in to, um, to assess it, but move it along in a, a fairly practical way so we can assess what we're doing and where we're going with it. All right? So this is the area where you probably find we could, you know, the surprise packet could really come out. Um, management team, um, again, you have to suffer another picture of me. Um, but we've got a, we've got a, we've really built over the last three years or so a really balanced team, which is very important to this. Firstly, you know, okay, I sort of run, and I, my background's more, uh, I've, invest, I've been a manager of, uh, 
of funds myself, uh, about seven or eight billion dollars, uh, pounds, sorry, uh, in the old days. Um, I've also uh, been involved with a lot of uh, investment banking. So I'm much more that management, M&A drive, keep the things moving. To me, time's the enemy. We've got to keep ourselves moving forward. And that's also been why we're sometimes a bit acquisitive too. Um, so the, only, the way to get uh, our, our values up and our share price up isn't just doing everything ourselves. Sometimes it's finding people who've already done it and, and it being undervalued. So we, right at the moment though, we wouldn't be looking to do that simply because we have a project in uh, Lee Creek that it's very important we bring to delivery. Do you mind if I just quickly ask you about because you've yeah. mentioned the share price several yeah. times. Yep. Um, it may be for some investors it has been a bit disappointing, yeah, sure, sure. but maybe they're not entirely convinced by this sort of diversification. Just, just say, obviously a big yeah. discovery yeah. would make a difference, but small investors want results. They don't hold shares for too long sometimes. Well, that's true. And, and the truth is, you say that, but then the other side of it is small investors normally react when you put out a good news story. I can say we've probably put in the last six months probably about eight to ten good news stories out and virtually had no, no reaction from most of the market. Um, in fact, we put out a bad news story the other day, which is fair because we report honestly and openly to our shareholders. Um, and when we did that, there was virtually no reaction from the market as well. <laughs> so um, I like, sorry, I do, I do have an anecdote. I don't know, I mentioned it before to Nigel. Um, when I first came back and took over this company about three years ago, we did a negotiation with a, a party that had a, um, a rail company that we'd had a dispute with. And we ended up getting a settlement that was, it was 650,000 US dollars in cash. And that 650,000 was about a quarter of the market cap of the company. When we announced it, the share price went down. <laughs> Two months later, we announced that we were updating our website. The share price went up 25%. Okay, <laughs> I, actually, I actually do some um, part-time lecturing in investment management in one of the unis in Australia. And as I said to them, AIM is an interesting market because it's one of those markets where information, we're not reported on by seven or eight analysts, right? So information takes time sometimes to see. When we've had our big, we had a big run-up. We were about a year and a half ago, we were about 0.4 of a P, 0.5. We're now about, we're now one and a half, we've been up to 3.5, okay? When we had that, a lot of that related to the fact that we started to put on new customers at Cobra that were bringing in cash and therefore we're making a profit. Now, the beauty about that is we don't have to go out and raise money to keep the lights on like a lot of companies do, okay? So when we did that, it took, I would say, a good three months for the market to start to absorb that. Now, I'm very particular about getting out each quarter what our sales were, for that, and so there's a little bit of a lag, but it does take time at, in an AIM market sometimes to digest information, and, and realistically, what can I do about it? Well, what I can do about it is I work at building the value in the company and wait for the market to catch up to it. Now, I can honestly say that myself and Peter Whale, who's over there, um, we back that ourselves. We have a lot of skin in this game. Peter's the second largest shareholder, when you take into account my options, I'm probably the, th the third most exposed to the share price. Um, we're not panicking. We're not worried about it. We know that in time it's going to be good. And in fact, um, we exercise our options. We know, and I'll mention something about that in a second, um, <coughs> our view is that the share price is grossly undervalued at the moment. So, Nigel, I probably digressed and did a sales pitch as well, but uh, I hope that's all right for what you were saying. Um, so, myself, we've got Alan Broom, who's an extremely well, internationally respected uh, mining person, particularly in um, coal. He's got behind his name AM, which is about the, um, not, doesn't mean A minor, it means uh, that he is um, about the equivalent of an OBE for services to mining. Okay? So, um, Peter's experienced and provides both an interface to our investors and gives us and helps us with our social media aspects. We've just added Jeff Harrison to our board. Jeff is um, a very experienced uh, mining engineer. So what we've now got is we've got a, a group 
I might just mention too with Alan, Alan is one of the best mining strategists I've run across. Okay? So he's helped us as we all, and we all have our input, but he's helped us formulate our strategies as to how. And for a company our size, where very few of us actually have as, have a, as, as focused a strategy as what we've got. Between that, we have a great team that pushes ourselves forward. And, and as we said, we've gone from being something that, you know, a few, three years ago was valued at, um, had a market cap of about three million pounds to something that's over 20 million pounds. Yeah? And if we went to those higher levels, it was probably over 30. But, um, you know, it's, it's about building teams, getting them together. As Amanda said, I, I used to manage money like Amanda did. And one of our golden sayings was, uh, good management are good for a company, bad management can kill a good company in six months. <laughs> okay? And that's the truth of it. You know? um, we have a very good team. I've got a, my CFO, I've got John Reynolds who's helping to run most of my Australian stuff at the moment. Most of these people are, on, are contractors rather than full-time employees. We run very really lean. We always joke we don't even have an office because basically I work at a home, although my wife is killing me about it. Um, and these are the, you know, these are the, the way in which we're, it's a new form of the way you run. But once you get your group together, once you get enough capital, you get enough movement, then you have the capacity to become almost anything. You know? And that's what we're pushing towards. Um, so coming back to ticking all the boxes, um, We've got underpinning cash flows. As I said, last year we made uh, we had uh, cash in the bank at the end of it of 3.8 million US, um, and we made probably close to 60% on the profits from the sales in um, in um, Cobra. We've got significant upside. Honestly, as we said, we don't have to go out to raise money to dilute shareholders to continue pushing the projects forward. So. Here we've got a basket of projects. All we need is one of them to come off and you've probably got a 10p stock. Right? So you've got really a lot of upside in this. It doesn't, and I, I, we're minus, so it doesn't mean it's always going to come off, but it means that you've got a number of bets in the thing. So you've got a, we've got a bit more diversity in that regard. Strong management team, I talked about it. We're good at locating, executing and operating the, the things. Um, and we keep a tight control on our overheads. Um, I talked about our, um, our strategy. I do also mention there, it says they're uh, resulting in significant battery market exposure. As I said, wasn't what our strategy was based on two or three years ago. We looked at what resources and metals and that, that we thought were going to do well with, with demand and supply, but as it's turned out, it's fitted very closely to that. Um, aligned with shareholders, all right? As I mentioned, the board and management have about 6.1. That's that's of what's exercised to date. There's still lots of options that have to go from that. They were options that vested. We said options when we were about 0.4 of a penny. We said options that had to vest at 1.5 and 3p. Right? Most people told me I was an idiot for doing that because who's going to get to that? You know? All of those are vested. We've been there. Some of our shareholders have had the opportunity to either come in or out. Um, personally, I think we're still way down on what we should be. I haven't sold a share, nor will I. Not just because I'm MD, but there's no way. I got my, uh, some of my kids actually bought shares at about 1.8. So they're underwater a little bit at the moment, so I might be in a bit of trouble when I get back to Australia. But, um, but I've got no problem. To me, our shares are going to go up. And that reflected in recently um, an options, options po uh, program that we put in place for management. We've exercised the others. We're trying to get people where we're going. Um, and I'll mention the, this why, part of why we did this a second. Um, I'll backtrack slightly. Uh, and that is, we've set options now for management, etc. We have about two or three years before they get to them. For us to get anything from those options, the share price has to be at 5.75, I think it is, Peter. Um, we all believe we're going to get them. <laughs> yeah? we're, it, and part of the reason why we believe it is... If you look at this, SP Angel, who's our broker and um, nomad, now they're pretty respected for their, their resources research. Okay? Before we did Lee Creek, they came out and said that they felt that our natural range should be somewhere between 2.4 and 3.5 P. After we did Lee Creek, they looked at it themselves 
and placed a price of about 3p for that project. Okay? So you're now talking about something that done properly, which I believe we're doing, is going to result in like a 5 or 6p stock. Need to currently trading. Cur it's almost finished here. Yeah. Currently trading at 1.5. Okay? All right? Um, so we're aligned with the shareholders. In fact, that's, this is the last point. You'll be glad. <laughs> Nigel? So positive outlook. We've got lots of things going on in our different projects. We've got positive new flow coming in all the time. So in the end, it's a very, it's a pretty unique sort of company. It's profitable. It's got lots of upside. You know? It, as I said, it ticks all the boxes. So, questions? Thank you very much indeed. Okay, so questions for Strategic Minerals. Everyone's going to be shy. <laughs> uh, good evening. Uh, just a quick question about uh, Lee Creek. Yeah, yeah. And the because uh, it sounds like you've already got an offtake for the whole lot. Correct. Uh, effectively, yes. Yeah. Can you just expand upon that slightly? And were they connected to, uh, to, uh, to the mine previously? Uh, were, why they closed the mine previously? No. So, uh, were they connected to the mine previously? Oh, uh, look. They, they actually, there's a long history that they had been at one stage. Um, they run a chemical uh, fertilizer business and it's you know just down the road in Australian terms about 400 kilometers um, but it's actually it's quite interesting and why I say I said before there's a reason why they want this contract what these people do is the a result from Lee Creek is what they call a copper cement right and these people that is exactly what they want for their own existing plant because their plants geared to that trouble is what they have to do now, because they can't get it, is they buy copper, then they re-engineer it back into the cement form. Right? So if you can imagine, as I said, they're paying us 85, which is a good percentage of the um, LME price. But to them, that's already 15% saving plus what they have to process on. So there's a win-win here. Right? They're more interested, and what I'm more interested in doing, is they're more interested in making sure it's not just about getting a product to them, it's about getting regular product to them. Most people, if you can't keep going regularly, they're going to they're say very soon they'll get jack of it and they'll look for something else. So, so could they take more than you can produce? Well, no. We, well, <laughs> they've said they can take 300, yeah. right? Right at the moment, our production capacity is about 2,000, uh, 2,400, you know, that's the 200, mm -hmm. I, I think. But with probably about a million US, I can probably take that up to about um, 4,000, right? So there's scope there to, to, to do them, and there's scope to do that. The other thing is we've got a certain amount of commodity in the area. Um, I always joke I'm, I'm going to become, I want to become the robber baron. But once we start operating infrastructure in the area, obviously smaller, and then lots of smaller little copper deposits around are actually become viable. Alternatively, you become a processing plant and you can charge your money. You know? So we really see that. I mean, we see that as a, as a huge potential upside. But we don't care even about that. Just doing this adds 3p to our stock. So we can't get over the fact that we announced this and we got people in on the back of this internet um, and yet the market is ignoring it. I think I do think there is some there is concerns in the market, some valid concerns, let us say, that um, whether we'll be able to... This has closed before, and it closed because I think of poor grading uh, management and some working capital questions, etc. Um, we know all about that. We've gone over it. People think that... So I, I got an email the other day going, oh, did you know this had closed before? Well, yeah, we did do due diligence. We actually did go and look at this, you know. And we've even had... We've had... Um, all my four directors, we had them out in March and we all went to the mine to see it, to make sure what we we're doing, to assess what, because we're committing a fair bit of funds. I will make this comment, all the funds we're committing this year to all those development projects are being funded internally. I have the money internally, the profits coming out of Cobrate, not just even with this other, other client being a bit sus at the moment, I have the money to complete my program this year. Okay? Now, whether I want to, what I want to do after that, I've got to look at. It depends on what's happening with Cobra, what money I've got, what I might generate even in Lee Creek while I'm doing it. But right at the moment, we're not looking at capital raising at all. Any more questions? I've got off easy. Okay. Uh, any, any comments, Amanda? 
<laughs> no? Can't we? Uh, okay. Fine. Fine. Okay. Let us move on then to our. Thank you very much indeed okay. to John Peters. Thank you. Peters.